Hey there everybody, today I wanted to make this video in a response to a question I got about post-viral seizures or post-infectious seizures. My name is Dr. Nathan Kaiser, I'm at the Kaiser Clinic in Chelsea, Michigan, and we help people with neurological problems find the underlying cause and figure out how to fix and solve them. So today when we talk about post-viral seizures, I think there are a lot of people out there that can resonate with this one. First of all, we should start off with the, defining that. So post-viral or post-infectious obviously means it's happening in the sequela or in the follow-up to a viral infection. And this is actually something that it is is very, very common with viral illness. Most commonly, we see seizures that occur for a brief period of time while there's ongoing encephalitis, and then as that heals, the seizures go away. We should probably define what seizures are and why that's useful. So there are lots of different kinds that we can think of, and the seizure will look different depending on which area of the brain it's affecting. So whether that's a grand mal or a global or a generalized seizure, or whether it's an absence seizure, all sorts of different variants that will occur depending on where in the brain is affected. What you're effectively seeing is areas in the brain that become disinhibited. Disinhibited means that normally that neuron is kind of held at a threshold where it's not firing and then we let it go and it can fire and do its job. But in this case we see where the epileptiform activity or the, the seizure activity is where there's too much firing in a pool of neurons. So they act when they're not supposed to act and that's where we get seizure activities from generally. So the way we typically diagnose them is by looking at that electrical activity in the brain. One of the easiest, uh, most accessible ways to do that is by looking at an EEG. And it looks at the electricity that's happening within the waveform of the brain. And when we look at that, it helps us to be able to see if there are these little epileptiform discharges. Those can help us localize more effectively where that's happening within the brain. And then you can kind of start to work from there to figure out how do you solve that? Is that something that's done uh, from a medical doctor with medication? Is that something that's done to try to solve the viral issue? What's going on there? So that's kind of the basics of the seizure component. I think the thing that's important to point out, there is a difference on when it happens. So in the acute phase of an illness, right away, when you're still inflamed, when your brain is inflamed, there's a higher likelihood that you'll experience seizures during that time, but they should wane, especially if you're able to notice them early, get it treated, you know, take that level of infection down, kill whatever is infecting the brain and get it to move on. Now, where they become more interesting or, or more dangerous is when we look at them that they develop later on beyond the virus. And this tells us that we still have something that is causing a persistent dysfunction within the brain. These are things we have to dig in a little more depth. Obviously, if, if we're past the stages of initial encephalitis, why is there th this dysfunction that is still occurring? And that becomes very important. But I think it's also important to differentiate that lingering dysfunction from a different type of seizure. It's not really a seizure, it's called a pseudo seizure, where the way it looks is very similar. The way people move, the, the way consciousness goes, those things are very similar. But when you measure them with the EEG, even during the seizure episode, we don't see evidence of increased brain activity or epileptiform activity during that time. And these are called pseudo seizures, and these can be relative to other types of problems. They can be relative to cerebral hypoperfusion is a common one that we see. It can be relative to injury within the brain that we can't see in an increase in the electrical discharge, but we can still see that there's dysfunction there. A lot of times pseudo seizures are labeled psychogenic seizures or functional seizures, and they kind of carry this connotation that it means it's, it's in your head. I don't think that's the, the smartest way to look at it. You know, we see that when you evaluate a lot of these people, there's an underlying dysfunction there that that is very important. If we kind of dismiss people and tell them that it's all in your head, then we, we steal the ability to tackle it and really go after it. So we find that a lot of the people that reach out to us, because they've been through kind of a traditional treatment set, we find that those pseudo seizures or functional seizures are, are commonly people that, that end up kind of under our care and reaching out and looking for somebody to look at it a little bit differently. So post viral seizures, we want to know, is it acute? Do we need to get after this virus first as a way to calm things down, get out of that phase? We don't like it as much if there are seizures that start out later after the infection and are continuous and lingering on there. We have to backtrack and figure out what's going on the brain, why is this lingering dysfunction still occurring? And then the offset of that is if we're measuring the EEG, we're looking at the brain MRI, we're looking at the blood work, there's no, there's no lingering infection, the EEG looks normal, MRI looks normal, they get labeled with this uh, psychogenic or pseudo version, that's when we want to start looking at what does the perfusion look like in the brain, what does the functionality look like in different contexts, what brings it out, what makes it worse, where are we noticing these problems, and how do we dive in and solve that. Uh, that's just a quick primer on seizures post-viral, but I hope it helps. I hope it answers the question. Again, questions or reaching out, please give us an email. You can leave a comment if you'd like. That'd be great. 
if you like it, it's really awesome for us and for other people that are trying to find us. So I appreciate that very much. Hope it helps. Take care.